In 2021, um, when Israel targeted Hamas in the Gaza Strip, they called it the first AI war. There's been a, a massive leap forward since then, and we're seeing a whole different scenario emerge in this war in Gaza. I want to just play out a, a soundbite by uh, Brigadier General Aviad Dagan, and I hope I haven't butchered, uh, butchered his name. He's, uh, this is from March 22 lecture at the Tel Aviv University when he talks about the IDF's new information and AI strategy. Listen to this. Yeah. Data and AI, they have some features that we don't have necessarily in the old ways we were fighting. It's dramatically more flexible and it's dramatically more adaptive of creating any kind of set of data or any kind of an AI network uh, of a neural network, then purchasing an F-35 or developing a new weapon for the troops. The speed that we can take this technology and create from it a sort of a weapon is totally different from the old ways we created physical weapons. So that's a really, really sobering thought, wouldn't you say, that there is so much that has happened between 2021 and the current war. And what he's just talked about just gives us a glimpse into the overall picture that is not, as you just rightly pointed out, not just limited to weapon systems or any particular uh, strategy, but it's all encompassing. Yeah, I think that's Right. And I, I think what he does a really good job of explaining is the intended benefit of AI on the battlefield. And this comes down to the notion which I and others have written about called the sensor to shooter timeline, that in the context of the reemergence of great power competition and God forbid conflict between the United States and what the national security strategy recently identified as our pacing threat, China or even the acute threat Russia, we would, in face of these near-peer adversaries, have to apply lethal effects at the right time, at the right place, for the right purpose, faster than they can. And if we can shorten the interval of time between identifying a target, whether it's a structure, whether it's a person, whether it's a network, if we can reduce that interval of time and apply lethal effects or non-lethal effects faster than these near-peer adversaries, then the vision is we can achieve our military and political objectives and indeed win in a full-on conflict with these states. And so the speed that this general officer talks about is where, in fact, the U.S. military across services, Army, Navy, and others are hedging their bets for AI to press down to the tactical level of operations, which means used by privates, by sergeants, and by lieutenants. Uh, and the prospects of this are really uh, very um, interesting, um, but there's a lot baked into these emerging warfighting concepts in terms of the assumptions of trust for our young officers and soldiers to actually operate in concert with these capabilities on the battlefield.